Um, so this is now more of what I was going to do today from sea to shining sea. So I'm going to now go a little bit guitar centric for you guitar players, but I do believe that this, what I'm going to teach you is going to, can be applied to any instrument. So guitar is a very wacky instrument because of the B string. The problem with guitars, okay, a piano is a beautifully logical instrument. The left side is low, the right side is high. When you go left, you go low, when you go right, you go high. When you look at a chord, you can see the intervals and it makes sense, it makes logical sense. It's a cut and paste instrument. A three note chord, when you move it to the right, if it's in C, then it's in D, it's always the same distance. Guitar, not, not true. Most guitar players don't really even know what notes they're playing. They kind of learn some shapes, right? And off they went to town, off to the races, which is fine, you know? If you can make music with this thing, great. But there's an easy way to get past that um, again, what I was going to say about the B string is that on a guitar, a major third looks like a triangle when you're down here. And a major third looks like a triangle when you're here. But when you get that B string in there, it looks like a straight line. Same interval, different shape. So you can see that that's where the confusion begins. And I think that, and also the ability to skip around so easily, creates this sense that guitar players play like gobbledygook, as opposed to melodies, you know? A trumpet player works within like a two octave range. And if you're playing the trumpet, right? You're, you're seeing a straight line, like on a piano. So you're... You're seeing a straight line where you're jumping for the high note and you're back. The problem with the guitar is that you can go right and go low or go right and go high. It's all over the place. So if I go... C note, and I move my hand to the right, it just went lower. If I go C note and I move my hand to the right, it went higher. It, it doesn't work that way. So the solution would be this, um, from C to Shining C. Take your guitar, right? And the first thing you do is identify all the C notes, okay? So it's kind of like uh, um, the sound of music. Let's start at the very beginning. It's a very fine place to start. Do a deer, a female deer. <laughs> Find the C note to start at the very beginning. Even this, you'd be surprised how many guitar players don't know where all the C notes are on their guitar. So this is a C on the third fret. This is a C on the B string. So A string, third fret, C. And I'm gonna count them. Well, you can just look at the videos where they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, I skipped one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There you go. So there's 12 C's on a guitar, if your guitar goes to 22 frets. That's like the first discovery for today. Um, so instead of learning kind of 
random shapes on the guitar, like, oh, you know, I play in this position when I'm in C, I, I always go to here. The trick would be, the C to shining C trick is, take two of the Cs, right? And connect them with a major scale. Now, major scale, if you don't know, is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. I'm worried that it's already starting to feel more complicated than I want it to be. And the easier way to think of that is we all kind of know what a major scale is. A major scale is do, um, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. So your job, your journey of discovery, and this is for all levels of guitar player. I'm guessing that there are advanced guitar players that actually have never done this and would find some holes in their playing. So this is for everybody, beginner or advanced. Take all the C's on your guitar and connect them with a major scale. Then go back down. And you can do an arpeggio. And play a chord. Okay. So that's connecting C1 and C2. Play chord. Now connect C1 and C3, whatever. Any of, you should be able to connect any of the Cs from C to shining C with a major scale. Then these. say it again and it's going to come up again there's only three chords you're a third of the way there there's only three chords major minor and dominant for those of you who are running to your keyboards to start screaming at me what are you talking about what about an augmented chord an augmented chord is a dominant chord with a sharp five it's it's a sound and it has a function but it functions as a dominant chord what about a major 6-9? That's a major chord with a 6 and a ninth. So all those other, other numbers and stuff are just sounds and colors. They're beautiful sounds and colors, and they're my favorite sounds and colors. But this is where I start thinking people make this stuff too complex. It's, it's not complex. There's the happy chord, the sad chord, minor, and the... I'm leading you someplace chord, dominant. Back home. So we're going to come back to that. But now let's get back to our scales, C to shining C. If you do what I just did, and it's going to take a minute, you have to sit with your instrument. You can do the same thing on the piano. Identify all the Cs, play a major scale, which is all white keys, so that's pretty easy, right? Then play a C chord. Saxophone, how many C's do you have on the saxophone? I don't know the answer to that question. How many C's do you have on a trombone or a bassoon? I'm not sure. Can you go up into harmonics? I have to ask Natalie. But a great starting place, I would say, you can't play a chord, but you can play an arpeggio. So become friends with your beautiful instrument, your best friend, and will always be there for you. I love my guitar. My guitar has never let me down. <laughs> it's always waiting in the corner. And identify all the C's. 
and then fill it in with a chord, uh, within the scale. Scale. See, I'm connecting them. Those are all C's. So the first thing to do, identify the C's, connect them with a scale, and then a chord. 